There are a couple new settings in ScorchCAD that I want to talk about. Um, if you open ScorchCAD and then go into the editor, there's a new menu button um, and there's two options and they're autocomplete and link file. Autocomplete um, will automatically suggest options for uh, completing commands uh, when you're editing in ScorchCAD. It's been causing people problems, so I made it an option, and it by default is off, and that, that allows the people that are gonna have a problem with that to not run into that problem in, initially, and, and people that like the autocomplete function can just turn that on, it'll turn on right away. If you turn it back off, it'll uh, it'll dump you back into the model menu, but or onto, into the model screen, but then when you reopen the editor, it'll, it'll uh, uh, the autocomplete will be turned back off. Um, the other the other item in this menu is link file, and what this does is it allows you to use an, or it, it helps um, you to use to uh, use ScorchCAD with an external editor. Um, what it does is it'll generate this the uh, OpenSCAD code to link to an external file. Um, it's going to ask you whether you want to replace replace the editor contents with a file link, and you say yes. It'll bring up the normal um, file di dialog, and then you just navigate to any file that you want here. Let's see if we can find one that'll be good. We'll link to sphere.scad. It's something I was just playing with. Um, say OK, and now it says at the bottom that a file, the file has been linked and compiled to um, to show the model. But before we do that, let's go back to the code editor. And what it's done is it's just automatically generated code um, in the form of an include statement that includes that file that we selected. See, it's that sphere.scad. Um, now we go back to the model, we can compile that, and it's just a sphere in, in a box, unioned. So now to go look at the code in that file, we can get out, open a separate editor, I'm using IOTA, um, we can go, go navigate to the same file, I think it's in my history, so yep, right there at the top. So now this is the code that's in that file, um, and it's just a sphere, color red, and then a cube. See if I can get it to show up a little better there. Okay. Um, so now we can change. If we edit that here, we can change. Let's see what we want to change. Let's change it to. Green. Oops. And then hit save. Now that's saved. Now all I'm going to do is go back into ScorchCAD and compile again. And now that cube has turned green. So in that way, you can you can avoid using ScorchCAD editor altogether. Um, just have the file linked. The other thing it'll do, if you link a file and you choose an STL file, it'll actually generate. Let's see. Well, we'll we can do it right here. Um, say yes. Gonna navigate to an STL file. Say OK and compile. And this is going to be a prop guard that I was working on for someone. Um, actually, it's for a Phantom 3, I think. I don't know what he has. Um, so that you go back to the code editor, and actually, instead of generating an include statement, it generated an import command. So if you have another program that you're generating STL files, and you just want to view an STL file with ScorchCAD, you can, you can do the same thing. Um, just save a new STL file, come back and you hit the compile button and it'll load it um, and in that way you can just use ScorchCAD as an STL viewer and it's not a it's not a super full function STL viewer but 
um, you can't beat it for um, the the size on the, on the uh, in your memory. I think it's only last time I checked. I think it was 176 kilobytes or something. So it's it's a pretty lightweight um, viewer um, for just looking at little STL files or whatnot. Um, it'll also do the same thing for DXF files, but I don't know. Scorchcat isn't really the best for viewing DXF files because it's going to extrude it into a into a solid before it shows it. So, uh, but that's that's kind of what I wanted to show everybody. Um, again, you just go into the code editor, and there's that new menu, and you have those two options. I'll turn the autocomplete off just to show you what it does. It's going to bump you out. So if you want to now edit. It's not going to auto-complete for me, so I'm going to start a new line here, and I'm going to just do C-U-B, and see how I'm j I just said C-U-B. It's not, it's not going to try to auto-complete that to cube. If I turn the auto-complete on, now it's, now it's giving me the option for cube right there. So that's kind of how that works. Um, so that's it. Good luck.